I'll ask you to stand and join with me as we celebrate Thanksgiving for baptism. We begin, my friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth the life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, Joy to the World. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Who has strengthened the bars of your yes. gates and, and has blessed, blessed your, your children, children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sent out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, 
scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can can stand stand against against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgment. Hallelujah. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 31, uh, verses 7 through 14. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them, them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who has scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their full of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel this day, a reading from the book of St. John in the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. We have come into being in, and in Him was life, and the light was the li- and the life was the light of all people. For the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlivens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. 
It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, now there's a way to start a new year. We started with the third creation story, but you know that already. Or if you don't, you need to check Genesis. This is the third creation story. Starts the same way, you'll notice. This is also poetry. Wonderful poetry, and boy, do we need that at the moment because it is giving so many people joy. I mean, here's the opening of the gospel. And in the beginning was the Word, and Word was with God, the Word was God. Uh-huh. Now, if you've got that, you need to take an English lit class at university because you're going to understand Shakespeare. It makes about as much sense because when you read it, just plainly off the page, what are you saying? And John says to us, I'm saying a whole lot of things you need to hear. I want to pick out just a couple this morning because John's gospel has two things you automatically need to know. First, it's written well after the other three. You'll notice it takes after the Gospel of Mark and the fact that there's no birth narrative. We don't get the story of Jesus being born. That's left to Matthew and Luke. You've heard that already. That's the assumption. Number two, oh, have I got layers to tell you, says John, and when you read his Gospel, there's always a meaning behind the meaning. All you have to do, for example, is look at the seven I am sayings of Jesus in this gospel. I'll let you look that one up. I won't go into those today. That's a whole nother sermon for another time. But we are starting here in the beginning with God. The way we should start every year in the beginning with God because God has this present for us. First thing to pull out, promise. It's a brand new year. It's a little more than 24 hours old at the moment, but it's just started. And it's full of so much hope, so much promise, so much that could happen, possibilities that unfold, and we have no idea where it's headed. Just like the NHL has no idea where it's headed at the moment. Well, I mean... Things are happening because we have this word Omicron in our lives. And God says to us this, promise is fulfilled when you walk down the road with this person. Second point, this person is grace and truth. Now, I'm not going to spend a long time on truth this morning. We're going to leave that one aside. Grace. Grace. I would remind you of my definition about mercy and grace. Uh, maybe you need me to do it again. Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve, and grace is when you do get what you don't deserve. This is grace. Not deserved, not earned, not bought, not taxed, not paid for in any way. This is the grace of God. Now, it shows up in all kinds of places, in all kinds of ways, at all kinds of moments. We need to be paying attention throughout this year to see the grace of God. Somebody asked me yesterday as we started this new year, how are you working with all that has gone on around Christmas concerning my wife? And I said, we treat it all the same way like we have for over 30 years. This is a new piece of the journey, and we're going to see where God 
Because it's important to follow along with the Lord. He has wonderful things. Like, for example, when I was doing chemo and radiation at the Cross Cancer Institute, now there's a experience. That's for later. But what I didn't know is how much God was going to reach people by us sitting there and talking to folks I never would have seen otherwise. Truly, it was mission work, top to bottom, back to front. I can unpack that for you at another time. What happens is if we follow God, there will be surprises and grace show up in all kinds of places. I was very privileged about six years ago to sit with the Reverend Tom Lawn. He was at that point homiletics professor at Duke in North Carolina. Some of you well know that location. And he said this. He said, I didn't understand how important this was until I volunteered. He volunteered to take the shift because nobody else would. They kept the place open when it got cold at the church for the homeless people to come in and get a coffee and warm up. And then he smiled and he said, now, that's not your definition. And we went, oh, and he said, yeah. He said, our definition of cold is anything that looks like lower than plus seven. And we all laughed, being Canadians. That's not cold. But they thought it was. And he said, my friend, whom I've been working on for nearly 20 years and who was not a Christian, said he'd come with me and we'd split the shift overnight. He took the first shift. He said, I wasn't asleep an hour and a half when he came. And he went, Reverend Tom, Reverend Tom, wake up, wake up. You got to see this. And I said, I got to see what? And he said, no, you got to come downstairs. He says, Jesus is there. And at that moment, at that point, at that time, the man gave his life to the Lord. This was right around New Year's. Reverend Tom told us this. He said, you never know when God's going to walk in and do things. And he said, truly, truly, it was a marvelous thing because he said, I watched these people who were homeless people sharing theological depths that we never got to at seminary. He said it was absolutely wonderful. God has the same promise for you and you and you and you and me and the folks up here. God has that promise this year. What we need to do is to be ready and to be open. So we're going to come to the other half of God's grace very shortly so that we're ready this year in 2022 to see where God's going to lead us for the glory and work of the kingdom. Amen. At this point, we have the hymns of the day. Mary, did you know? And oh, come, let us adore him. Stand and join with me, please.
your baby boy with gifts I to the blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy calmed the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels run? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss your baby boy is the Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy one day ruled the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great confess our faith now in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, 
at all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God. Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Emmanuel, in your name we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption progress, process, especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss and tenderly embrace all who are afflicted in mind, body, or spirit. And to the list that we name from our hearts, we add Sandy, Howie, Carrie, Curtis, Sharon, Joan, Tammy, Henry and Violet, Eric, Rebecca and Curtis, Kim, Viola, Rose, Rick, Nancy, Tiffany, Pam, Leah, Kelsey, Chris, Riley, Avery, David and Diane, Daniel, Bill, and also all others, Lord, extend your renewing and restoring hand to all whom we have named before you, that they might be your servants this day. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles in this congregation or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendar change, equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for all who model lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until with all your saints we enter the fullness of your God, glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. You may be seated. It's still a mystery to me.
Jesus the Christ, born in Bethlehem. you to stand and join with me. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son, by your Spirit Strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now this is better because we're back with a list of birthdays to start with. So we have Oris Barron, Shane Hunter, Dan Kulak, Allison Ramsley, and Diane Thomas. All who have birthdays coming up very, very shortly. We need to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. My wife and I would like to thank everyone who gave us gifts over the Christmas season. A um, couple of other announcements. Uh, we, she has a major appointment tomorrow, so there's more news coming about things that are unfolding with her. In, that's in case you're wondering. Number two, Bible study starts this Wednesday again. Lawrence is going, yep, got it. I'll be there, boss. Okay. We're, we're doing both and now, though. Um, one of our regulars is not able to be with us for a time. So that person has asked to Zoom in. So we're going to do Zoom and in person. Uh, check with Karen. Check the website. And we'll have an address for you so that that can happen. Now, that's... All I've got at the moment, other announcements? No? Must be the start of a new year. <laughs> other than this, enjoy it right now. It's going to get colder. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But hey, we got breathing room. We give thanks to God. It's, it's nice to catch a break. I mean, ponder this. Envision six weeks at minus 40. I have been through a winter since I lived in the western part of Canada, literally where the temperature didn't move much above minus 40 day and night for six weeks. And let me tell you something, my dear friends. The only way it felt warmer was the wind stopped blowing. At least it did a little bit. It wasn't Lethbridge, but there you are. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for our closing hymn. 
I said, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching for silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heaven there shone a holy light. So go. God.